Somebody said this to me recently. We cannot compare the values of text fields from different tables in Power BI using measure. We can only use calculated field. And I said, really? At the back of my mind, I was thinking there must be a way because best practice in Power BI data modeling is to avoid calculated columns and use measures where possible. I'm very pleased to say that I have found a way to compare text fields using measures instead of calculated column. And that's what I will show you in this video. Before I get started, let me ask you a question. Have you ever come across a situation when you need to merge information from different tables so you can then compare the values of two text columns to see if they are the same or different? For example, something like this. We have two tables, an item table that shows preferred supplier for each item, and a purchases table that shows historical purchases, various items from various supplier over time. And here is a question that we need to answer. How many times are you buying from non-preferred supplier? In Excel, this is a relatively easy thing to do. To answer this question, we can merge information from historical purchases with preferred supplier that we can derive using XLOOKUP from the item table. And then after that, we can then use an if statement to compare the two columns, supplier name column C, and preferred supplier in column E, and we can say if they are the same, then zero, meaning we are not buying from preferred supplier. And if they are different, we put a one, which means yes, one equal to we are buying from non preferred supplier. The question is this how do we do this in Power BI? Let's go to Power BI together. Unlike in Excel, where we can create as many columns as we like to store various calculations, in Power BI, best practice is to avoid creating additional columns unless if it's absolutely necessary. Less columns and more rows are best for optimizing Power BI data model. Slim tables keep the columns to the minimum, and long tables, it is okay to have lots of rows. Wherever possible, we should be creating measures instead of calculate columns in Power BI. Therefore, we should write our if statement in measures rather than calculated column in Power BI. Let's go to Power BI. We have two tables similar to Excel, the item table and purchases table. In the item table, we have item name and preferred supplier name. And in purchases table, we have all historical purchases similar to Excel. Next, let's go to the model view. And let me show you how we can create a relationship between the table. All you need to do is click and drag the common field. So item name from item table, click and drag to the purchases. And when it's done, you can see a line and make sure it's one to many relationship, one in the dimension table, which is a smaller table and many, which is the star in the purchasing table or the fact table. Next, let's create another column that shows if you are buying from non-preferred supplier. For example, this line in here, the supplier name is Woolies, but the preferred supplier is RD. So we want that to be marked as yes, we are purchasing from non-preferred supplier for this line. Now, some of you may be inclined towards thinking that we should be inserting additional calculated columns in the purchases table, just like in Excel. In Power BI, that is something to be avoided. All right, let's create our measure so that we can show purchases from non-preferred supplier. We'll do it in two steps. First, we need to create an interim measure, non-PS interim measure. It is an if statement. If private supplier name from item table is not the same as supplier name from the purchases table, so that is uh, not the same. If you want to write the same, then you just type equal, uh, making it not the same. If it's not the same, it means that we are buying it from non private supplier, give it a one. If not, then give it a zero. So that's our first measure. Now, if you click and drag that interim measure here, you will see that 
wow, we suddenly have duplicated lines and don't panic because some of this line is irrelevant because as you can see, there is no sum of purchase quantity. That's why we need to write another measure later on. And another problem with this interim measure, apart from the duplication, is the total is zero. We want the total to be shown. So we are going to wrap this measure inside some X. Let's create our second measure. Click new measure. And this is our measure, non-PS, sum X, open bracket, purchases, which is the name of the table, and non-PS, interim measure earlier. So what does it mean? It means that what we did earlier will need to be done row by row. It needs to be reiterated across all the rows of the purchases table. So if you think about what we have done earlier, in our previous measure, we are doing comparison. And this comparison needs to be done row by row. And the tax measure that is forcing the calculation to be done row by row is some act reiterator. So watch this. I'm going to replace that with our new measure. And voila, it is now looking good. Look at that. In this first three transaction or four transaction, Aldi and Aldi, they're not marked as non preferred supplier because the supplier name and preferred supplier name are the same. But Woolies and Aldi, it's a non preferred supplier purchases because they are not the same. And lastly, the total, look at that. It is showing the correct total one, two, three, four, five, six, and then scroll down seven, eight, nine correct total is being shown underneath. Now, if we want to, we can also create similar measure for preferred supplier purchases. So I'm just going to delete that and change it to equal. And then hit tick. And then once that completed, we are going to copy the same thing. This is a preferred supplier equivalent. And let's just change that. Now, what we have created is another measure, another flag that says this is the transaction. The PS is the transaction where we are buying from preferred supplier, whereas the non-PS is situation whereby we are buying from non-preferred supplier. And then the sum of the two are basically total purchases. So now you can quickly sort all the one is basically instances whereby we have been buying from non preferred supplier. As you can see in here, in May, in February, in March, etc., we have various situations whereby we were buying from non preferred supplier. Now, as a bonus, let's use all this measure that we have just recently created to create charts so that we can show by month. Non PS. And then PS. And then let's change the column so that when we are buying from non preferred supplier, it is highlighted in orange. So this is suggesting that in the month of May, every single purchases is done from non preferred supplier. Mm, not very good. But in January, we are 100% compliant. All the purchases were done via preferred supplier, similarly in April. But in March, that was kind of a mixed bag, half done via preferred supplier, half done via non preferred supplier. Now we can also modify this chart so that the x axis is not month, but we can make it and change it into item. And when we do that, just click and drag, replace that month with item so that we can see which item are we most frequently buying from non preferred supplier. And that's item B in here. Item A and E, we're quite compliant. That's how comparison can be useful 
in creating new measures, which can then be used to create new visuals that help us to track situation whereby we are not compliant, such as in this instance, buying from non preferred supplier. I really hope that you find this information useful. Congratulations, you have now reached the end of this video and have learned how to create new measures to compare the values of tax field in different tables. Sometimes it is okay to create additional columns, especially if we really want to show the value of calculated columns in our slicer. However, this option should be used sparingly, especially when dealing with large data set, so that we don't make our model unnecessarily big, slow, and efficient. I will show you how to do this in my next video. In the meantime, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe so that you don't miss out in my future video. See you next time.